we're looking at the life of Joseph and we are learning lots of things about Joseph. We started in chapter 37 of the book of uh, Genesis and uh, we asked ourselves why were we born seeking the purpose of which you are here. Then we looked at chapter 39. We asked ourselves, who are you? We were seeking to find our identity. Because once you know yourself, you will not fall into any scene that will come and pull you down. Last, the other Sunday, we looked at uh, Genesis chapter 40. And we are asking yourself, are you willing to wait on God? Because sometimes we are so panicky, we are so quick to, to run away. We want it quickly, we want it now. If not now, we want it right now. But today we want to look at chapter 41, the sovereignty of God. Because the question actually we are trying to ask ourselves is, how big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? Sovereignty of God. Sovereignty of God means that God is in charge of all things at all times in every situation. That's God. If he is not in charge in everything, in every situation of yours, then he is not God. But God is. The sovereignty of God is at every detail of your life. He knows it. He has an idea. He commands it. He leads it. He guides it. Therefore, to call God sovereign, it simply means, God, you are the boss. That's what it means. When we say, God, you are sovereign, then you are the boss. And when God is the boss, then you know there are things that he does uh, which are unique in his dealing. Uh, when we traveled with that couple and another couple, we traveled for four hours. And we, we went listening to song and talking to one another and giving testimonies. We reached to a place and everyone gave a testimony of how God has worked in the heavens for us to get ourselves to where we are. And indeed what we saw is the sovereignty of God. Because God has an idea of where you're going tomorrow, but you don't know. God actually knows uh, the things that he's going to trigger so that you can become all that you, he wants you to be. He has the idea. He has all the mechanism because he's sovereign. He, he is God. He doesn't need a visa to come and push you to the U.S. But you will need a visa so he has to work out so that you get the visa for you to get there. And some get visas in very unique way like our brother Maura who went to North Dakota a week ago. Maura gets a visa. The visa that you long for which they pay for themselves. And they pay your flight themselves. And they book a house for you for two months themselves. And they equip the house for you themselves. All what you need is to get there. Now God has those ways. But if, even if he doesn't do that way, he goes the other way around. You struggle for the visa here. You struggle for your flight. You struggle for what you're going to eat. It is still that God. It is the supremacy of God. And we cannot say, why did you do this to James? and you do not do it this to Peter. That is God. He's sovereign. So when we are saying he's sovereign is, why does this shop do better than the other? And they are selling the same commodity. Again, sovereignty of God. What do we mean this? If he is the boss, then we are saying he knows what he is doing, and because he knows he's doing it. Amen. Because he knows he is doing it. If God is not sovereign... To you, then he is not God. If you serve a God that cannot guide you, lead you, that is not the God we are talking about. Because we are talking a, a God where everything works for good to them that are called according to his purpose. God's sovereignty, therefore, is the answer to the biggest question that we do. And the question there is, who is in charge? Who is in charge? When we know who is in charge, even in our worship, will not struggle. Hatuta imba fundu wambao. Apana. Kwa sawa tunajua fundu wambao naeza kuwa saramara yuko pale. Tuta imba kuhusu ye yambaye. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the groom. We are the bride. We'll sing about that God and what he does. And we'll bless his holy name. 
Sovereignty of God actually is one of the, the Bible doctrines because Bible is com uh, there are so many doctrines in it. It is one of the doctrines that you can find it in every page. In every page of the Bible. If you look at every page of the Bible, you will find it. Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God, and he does things the way he does it. He does them well the way he does it. Genesis chapter 2, he's creating this man. Chapter 3, there is all these things that he's doing. Chapter 4, you, every page has the sovereignty of God. But for you to understand maybe, it's good to read a couple of scriptures so that we can see what we mean by this sovereignty of God. In the book of uh, Job, if you're looking at Job, I would say Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23, verse number 13. Job, here Job is. And in Job chapter 23, verse 13, he says it, but he stands alone. And who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. Job understands he cannot change his situation where he is. He cannot demand anything from God. He cannot appeal to God. He is there. He cannot even plead his cause. He can only worship God so that God can do what he knows how to do and do it well. In Job 42 and verse number 2, I know that you can do all things. This is what Job is saying. And no, no plan of yours can be thwarted. He says, God, I know you so much. And the plans you have, nobody can mess them. You see, there is a prophecy that came to this country a long time ago that Kenya is going to be the beacon of evangelism in this part of the world. Sometimes I think in my own human thinking, it will never happen. But lo and behold, it will happen. If God has said it, it might take a little longer, but it will happen in the name of the Lord. Job is saying that I know that what the things that you do and the plans that you have, they cannot be thwarted. You see, and that sobers you up. That it doesn't matter where I am in prison. It doesn't matter where I am serving Potiphar. It doesn't matter where I am in a pit. It doesn't matter where I am looking at the ship of my father. It doesn't matter where I am. If I'm going to be the prime minister, he will make sure I get there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Job says, says, knows that. He introduces something that it's so powerful. He's saying, I have tried... God and God has asked me questions and I have failed all of them about creation. Job had no idea the creation that he was living in and so do you and myself. In Psalm 115 verse 3, our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. In other words, you, we have to understand that our God is somewhere and he does what pleases him. And when we read this, it should sober us. Actually, it's like the young people. Yani, ukifika mali, pato wasa, mungu yuko binguni, na anatenda anayotaka, utadu. In other words, God is able to do the things that he does. And if he does it, what are you going to do? You see, I normally tell you, the people that you are living with us here today, tomorrow, they will not live here. They are the same material that will live in Runda. Here. The same material that will go to the U.S. Here. The same material that will go to Australia. Here. We are the same material. No other material. So you are the material. Therefore, you should believe that what God has said about you will come to pass. And sometimes you are saying it. Actually, somebody in this church said, I'm going to say that God is good until I believe it. It's because sometimes where you are, you say he is good, but things are not right. But you are going to say it until all the flesh within you says, yes, God, indeed, he is good. So it is clear that the Lord of the universe does whatever he pleases. How about in the New Testament? There is a wonderful uh, statement that Paul writes. Actually, you could call it doxology. In Romans 11, verse 33 to 36. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths be old tracing out. Verse 34. 
who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been the, the counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things utadu. To him be glory forever. It sobers you up that God can do it. God can do it and there is nothing and nobody can stop it. What a powerful statement from Paul. So Paul is de 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 declaring that the gospel of God is the answer to man's sin. And his presentation of God's future plans for Israel. No one can have foreseen how God will respond to human rebellion. But God had a plan for Israel. Like a small country. Surrounded by enemies. They throw, she throws back. You kill one Israel, Israeli, they kill 20 or 30. So if I were the guys there, I would be in peace with those people. Because it is like the story of Elisha. Remember the story of Elisha? The Assyrian king was saying one time, Who is the one who reveals my secret? And he was told by one of the prophets, and that is our prayer that we shall know the sovereignty of God. As I told you the other day, I told you that the problem that you have, I wish, I wish we did not know that Joseph became the prime minister, that we are going to learn later. But unfortunate is that you already know. So even if I tell you how prison hard it is, you say, be your prime minister. But that is because you know it. But if you read it without knowing, you will be saying, oh, he, kamefungwa, hakajafanya kitu. Have you read a story which you had not finished, a book? Ambayo ujaisoma, inakuwa na mahali na kupereka, unastuka, lakini kama umesoma adithi, ata unaeza ambia mungine. When I watch movie with my daughter, because sometimes we watch movie, My daughter has seen them many times. But she is very wise. You know what she tells me? Si ugoje ujione mwenyewe. Saa nikikuambia, how to enjoy. Na mi nataka, niambie, ni enjoy. Niambiwe, itaishaje, ni enjoy. Lakini no, Joy tells me, ah ah, if watilie, ukifika musho uta enjoy. Lakini nikikuambia, utashika. And that's a problem with you. Nyinyo musha ajua. But I want to tell you, Joseph himself never knew he would be a prime minister. He knew God was going to do something. He knew that his brothers would bow at him. But at this point, he's even wondering, they must be dead. They believe I'm dead. How will they bow at me? I am a slave. I am in prison. That is Joseph. There he was. But if we can look through a keyhole in that life of Joseph, We'll find that there are many other things that we can relate to in our own life. And the question that we're asking ourselves and we keep on asking ourselves, why God do two patients, they are suffering from the same cancer problem. They go to a cancer center and they are treated. One is healed, the other one dies. Two go to cancer center. And they are all told you are going through chemotherapy. One dies before he finishes the chemos. The other one goes through, loses all the hair, and then the hair starts growing again like Samson. He is God of the ones that die. He is also God of the ones that live. But the ones that die, we ask God questions. Why did they have to die? He was stronger than the other guy. Lord, when I went to that ward, that other guy seems like he was dying. My patient looked like he was coming out. It is your patient. It is when you thought in your own thinking. That one you condemned, God lifted up. That one you thought was. Because our thinking are lower than the thinking of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sovereignty of God. Yesterday I visited a friend of mine. And I met somebody we went to school with. This man is a professor. 
top notch. But as I left, driving all the way from Thika, I went back to class. He was not the brightest. Neither was he the... Yalikuwa katikati ya wale wamesoma. Lakini yalikuwa kitushinda. Tulikuwa kwa domi moja na yeye. Na alikuwa mchafu sana. Lakini tukienda darasani. Hata mwalimu anashanga ukeoga li. <laughs> now the thing is we went through some of them went to form 5 and form 6 and uh, he ended up going to China to Japan he ended up teaching. I was still comparing where our top notch is working because I also know where he's working. He's working as a clerk somewhere. While this other guy is a professor. No, no, let's say this. Let's come home. Well, this guy is a bishop. Yes! Now that is the sovereignty of God. Yes! It has nothing to do with the village you are born. It has nothing with the school you went to. It has all to do with the sovereignty of God. If I were you, I would say, Sovereign God, remember me. Sovereign God, here I am. Because God knows every one of us. He knows the timing. I went to Canada 1980. I got deported. I go to Canada when I want to have a visa for 10 years. What does that mean? The sovereignty of God was I get deported. August 1980. Today I go in and I come out. I am speaking to someone. They might have refused for you to get that visa. But may God remember you because he is divine. He is sovereign so that you can go in and come out. Amen. Seeing through that eye. An accident happens. This car rolls many, many times. And it is so compacted. But the guy walks out. He just unajua gari ikianguka inakuwa kana vumbi sijui inatoka wapi vumbi nyingi huko ndani <laughs> gari ikianguka uangalie mtu akitoka sijui za America najua za hapa akitoka ni kama vumbi <laughs> ni kama poda ya vumbi so mmoja anatoka anapanguza hata ninyi mnamwambia uende upimwe labda uligogeshwa kichwa wako anasema hakuna mahali niko sawa Na mwingine gari inagongwa nyuma. Anakufa. Nyuma. Simbele. Mwingine naanguka. Anakufa. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when I understand the sovereignty of God, I will not be in the club of complaining. That's what I'm bringing to you. That Joseph got into a club where he has agreed with the sovereignty of God. He is just waiting upon what God can do. Wow. Wow. Why? Your time now. So in other words, we could sum up the 57 verses of Genesis 41 this way. That Pharaoh had two dreams. Another portion we could say, Joseph gave him the interpretation. And then Joseph gave him the plan. And then Pharaoh gave him the promotion. And the whole of that chapter ends there. But there is something that I want you to pick so that I can conclude because of... Kwa sababu ni sisi tutu metaim. Kwa hivyo, lazima ni kubaliane na ayo. Sawa. Joseph, in the morning, he was a prisoner. In the evening, he was a prime minister. May God turn some of you, you wake up in the morning feeling unwell, but as you go to the evening, may the Lord heal you. 
You wake up in the morning looking for a job, but as you end in the evening, there is a job for you. You wake up in the morning, you're wondering what business to do. May the evening also bring the job for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You wake up in the morning, no school fees, but as the days come to an end, may the Lord provide you school fees. Joseph woke up a prisoner. He ended up in the evening a prime minister because the heavens for Joseph were opened. And I'm still saying there is an open heaven to some of us. Keep on holding. This is only September. There is October, November, December. May the Lord bring it to pass to you and to me in the name of Jesus. Now listen. This is what happens to Joseph. He ends up by writing to us something hidden. Ukondani. Verse 50 and 52. He has prophesied. This is what is going to happen. He has given a plan. He has been appointed. And he has started work immediately. Because that needed haste. He has collected all the food and so on. And as he collects all the food, he was also given a wife. You know, I was so amazed. Yesterday where we had gone, we, we need to recommend your, your, your diary, something, something. When I was coming up, I thought, education ni nzuri na nimbaya. Mwambia jirani yako, education ni nzuri na nimbaya. Kwa sababu wakikuyu tulikuwa tukipima tuki mwanaume na effort. Vile anarima, vile anakata miti, vile anavuruta, vile akiegea kwa shamba. Na mtu alikuwa anaweza toka Nyeri akuje hapa kwetu Kiambu. Akifika kwa chief anapewa mahali ya kulima. Ambio lema haha. Akilima vizuri, apenda msichana wa chief anapewa. Mwambie jirani yako githomo ni kiega na ni kiuru. Kwa sababu sasa, uli analima, awe biti yangu. Sitakuwa, situtaomba sana. Situta katika nandimi, sinitawaita wa kristo wanisaidia hiyo maombi. The effort of this man called Joseph, akapewa mke. Your prophetic word. Chukua mke. Akawa. Hapo ndipo nataa kutamanisha to finish what I'm sharing. And then he got two sons. The first one he called Manasseh. Can I have a Manasseh here so that I can demonstrate what I'm talking about? The first one he called him Manasseh. You know the meaning of Manasseh? What is it? That the Lord has caused me to forget my parents, my brothers, the hatred they hated me. Because of Manasseh, what have I done? I have forgotten. So Manasseh, every time I see Manasseh, what do I see? I have no brothers. I have nobody. Nimimi tu. Wapi Ephraim? Tupate Ephraim. Pastor, I don't to you. Your speed, Pastor Wes. <laughs> Ephraim, that God has made me fruitful in the land of my captivity. So every time Joseph sees Manasseh, the firstborn, what does it remind him? I had family, I have no family now. When he looks at Ephraim, he says, I am blessed. Ebu wasimame hapo kidogo, kwa sawa ni watu wa mungu, wasiende sana. Na hiyo kitu kama inaweza ogezo dakika tatu, itakuwa mzuri sana. So note that Manasseh and Ephraim are Hebrew names. Even though he was living in Egypt, and even though he married an Egyptian woman who was the daughter of a pagan priest, Joseph gave his two son names that would remind them forever of their true heritage. He tells that though he appeared to be Egyptian on the outside, on the inside he was still worshipping the true God. Now, 
Now this, 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 is, this is not in my notes. But what I discovered in my preparation, although it is not written, it is like, although Joseph forgave his brothers, and we are going to see that later, and although Joseph blessed his brothers and he cried with them, as long as Manasseh was the firstborn, and he was seeing Manasseh as firstborn, he was always thinking about his brothers who now are alive as if they were dead. Are you getting the point? They, are, they have come. They are alive. But as long as he looks at Manasseh, the firstborn, it's like they are dead. So he goes to his father, Jacob, and tells him, Jacob, his father, his father was blind at that time. Daddy, I have come so that you can bless me. On my right, I have my firstborn Manasseh. On my left, I have my son Ephraim. On my right, I have forgotten that you live. And my brothers, whether they are alive. On my left, I have been blessed in the land of my captivity. He's telling his father like that. So the father says, bring them closer. And he brings them closer. Then what does Jacob do? Now go on the other side. Because the right hand is to bless, is it? The first one. What does he do? He changes the hands. And Joseph says, no, 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 no. This is the first one. I know. I know. So he, he blesses Ephraim as firstborn and Manasseh as what wa mungu wapigeni makofi. The point that I want to bring to you and finish is this. There are some of us, all what we are seeing is a Manasseh. And Manasseh's work is for us to ask God for forgiveness, to ask God that God you have remembered me and right now where I am, I want to trust in you. But this memory, this memory, this memory has a time. It must get to a place where you change your evil memories with the good memories. There must be a time that Manasseh will be shifted and you'll be talking about the good tidings that the Lord has brought. No wonder when his father died, Joseph was a different person. He would even declare, I know my purpose. Why I was born was so that this day I might save many people. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord shift the hands as he brings his blessing. May the Lord cause you to see Ephraim in your life. The Manasseh of life will cause you bitterness. It's a good thing only for asking God for forgiveness. But when God blesses you, 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 you receive the, even those that you thought they were dead, you bring them back to you. Like Joseph is demanded at Genesis 50 and verse 20. I hope you are hearing what we, what we are saying. We are saying if God is sovereign for you, he will bring it to pass. It might have taken a little longer, but the Lord will bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. We want to pray because although the, although wame nikubalia wame niongeza dakika anu watu wazuri sana. Nilipoomba wame niongeza tano. God bless you. But we can use those five minutes to pray. And the prayer we are praying is this. Actually, there are some people who entered through that door and that door when I was praying in the morning. I was feeling there are some people that will walk from that door and this door. And as they walk into that door, they will walk with bitterness. Although God has blessed them, they will walk with bitterness and anger and that God would like you as you live. You live with rejoicing. You live with Ephraim in mind. I'm saying this to tell you this. That God has ministered to us. And he does minister to us. Maybe 10,000 times. But we only remember three things. Or three times. Do you know the times we remember? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We don't remember anything else. But can I, can I shock you? You don't remember the appetite. 
Even to enjoy the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner. And it is something that the Lord has given you to enjoy it. The hell that you have. There are so many things. So about 10,000 to some, a million to others, a thousand to others, 20 times to others, but we only remember three things. Actually, if I ask some of you, what are you remembering right now? Is the quarrel you had with your spouse last night? Is the quarrel you had with your children this morning? And yet God has done so many other things that we can come to the house of God and, and give him honor and they give him praise. If you walked into this house and you are saying, Lord, shift the hands. I want you to walk to the front. And the ministry team is going to pray with you. If you are saying, Lord, shift them. Oh, I want them shifted. I have been in this mountain for too long. I want to walk here knowing that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, even more than I imagine. Let's all stand up, shall we? And those that are walking, please walk quickly. I have only three minutes. That was added to me, only three minutes. But I know you are there. You walked through that door and this door, you know it. And you, you can feel it. And God would like to minister to you today. And some of you are up there. You walked in and you went up there. There are people that are ready to pray for you up there. The ministry team up there is ready to pray for you. Just walk to one of them and tell them, what shift are you looking for? What are you crying to the Lord to do for you? And God will meet you at the point of your very need.